hello, my brothers and sisters. I wanted to let you know that this may be the last video that I make for a week or more. I'm going to be leaving tomorrow and traveling for um, a vacation for my 25th anniversary with my husband and my children. So if you don't hear from me for a while as far as videos, uh, please know that, um, Lord willing, I'm fine. I'm, I'm simply traveling and enjoying a blessing from the Lord with my family. But I wanted to do, um, in parting for a while, I wanted to do a video on um, the 10 virgins in Matthew chapter 25, uh, verses 1 to 13. And I wanted to read those to you first. And then I had something on my heart that I wanted to share with you that uh, the Lord has been showing me for quite a few years now, but I wanted to make a video on it. So let me start with Matthew 25, uh, verses 1 to 13. And this is dealing with the parable of the 10 virgins. Uh, we know that uh, the Lord from Genesis to Revelation has shown himself to be a bridegroom that he is the husband of his people. It says uh, in the Old Testament, it says that your maker is your husband. The Lord Almighty is his name. Uh, John the Baptist said the bride belongs to the bridegroom. Jesus referred to himself as the bridegroom. Uh, in Revelation, it says that let us rejoice and be glad for the wedding of the lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready. Notice it says his wife, his true betrothed, will know that she's betrothed to Christ and will make herself ready. Paul referred to Yeshua as our bridegroom. He says, I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy, for I have betrothed you to one husband, to Christ, so that I might present you as a chaste virgin to him. So let me start off here in Matthew 25. <clears throat> and Jesus says here, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels uh, with their lamps. Now, oil represents the Holy Spirit. And this, your body, is the vessel uh, that burns for the Lord. So the oil is the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, your intimacy with him, that longing and that, that desire that you share with the Holy Spirit because he lives in you. And the vessel or the lamp that burns is actually your body, the temple of the Holy Spirit. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. And while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. Notice it wasn't just the foolish virgins that slept as the Lord tarried. It was the wise as well. I think sometimes we can get so caught up in our daily lives, like I've said before, with your jobs, uh, your marriages, your, your children, whatever it is, the cares of this world are, can draw you away from paying attention to your bridegroom and his soon return. So it says here, even the wise uh, slumbered and slept. And at midnight, there was a cry made, behold, the bridegroom comes, go ye out to meet him. Obviously, there were watchmen on the wall. Midnight arrived and the watchmen on the wall were saying, look at the signs of the times. He's coming, he's coming, he's coming. And God has put watchmen on the wall to alert these virgins that your bridegroom comes. Uh, are your lamps ready? Are they filled with oil? Is your intimacy with the Lord what it should be so that if he came today or, or you met him even at the end of your life, are you ready? So God is going to put watchmen on the wall to, to send out that cry, behold, midnight is here, the bridegroom is coming soon. And the foolish said, okay, I'm sorry, verse 7, then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, No, not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. Notice that the foolish had to ask those who were ready, Give us some of what you have. And there are going to be many people in, at that time um, during these last days that are going to come to you if you're wise and you're ready and you're awake and you're in love with your bridegroom and watching and are going to ask you to uh, give them some of what you have with the Lord. I think this is part of the issue of, believe it or not, and this is just my opinion, of people running and chasing after um, televangelists and other people's books and programs and methods and 10 steps to this, that, and the other thing. We're looking to men to give us that fire, to give us that intimacy, uh, to, to help us be prepared. Remember, Jesus said he is the bridegroom. To groom someone means you prepare them. Who is the bridegroom? Jesus himself. We have one teacher, the Christ. He is the one, if you stay in close, intimate fellowship with him, that will prepare your heart for his coming. 
You can't go to your fellow man and expect to get something from them that only Jesus can give you. Each person that is called to be the Lord's elect uh, and filled with his spirit must pursue this intimate relationship with Jesus themselves. I can't go to any of you and ask you to give me what you have with Jesus. I have to ask the Holy Spirit to draw me. The Song of Solomon says, uh, the bride says, draw me and I will run after you. We have to ask the Holy Spirit to create that longing and draw us to have our own face-to-face, -face, personal, day-to-day -day intimacy with Jesus. I cannot, it, it's it's almost like taking two, uh, two married couples and one married couple asks another married couple, uh, transfer to us what you have in your marriage and give it to us. Well, can that be done? Or if I have my own intimate experiences with Jesus, can I give that to you? Can I make you see it, understand it, taste it? Can I truly transfer that to you? No, you have to want to seek the Lord yourself and ask him to reveal his heart to you in a deep and personal and warm and intimate way. Intimacy with Jesus is not something that can be transferred by osmosis. It's something that the Holy Spirit has to do in you. Uh, Romans says that it is God who works and wills in you to accomplish his pleasure in you. So pursue Jesus the way you would an earthly spouse. No one else can make your marriage with your earthly spouse what it should be. The two of you have to work on it together. So these foolish virgins go to the wise and say, give us what you have. And the wise say to them, I can't do that. I can't do that. They hold on to what they were given until their bridegroom came. And notice even though they all fell asleep, they all had, I mean, I'm sorry, the wise had obviously built an intimacy with their bridegroom. They had enough oil in their lamps so that when the cry rang out, they were immediately ready, even though they may have been distracted by the cares of this world. So it says here in verse 8, And the foolish said to the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. Again, you cannot rely on man to give you with Jesus what only you and Jesus can forge with one another in private, in the secret place. But the wise answered, saying, No, not so, lest there not be enough for us and you, but go rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Now at the end of this, the Lord says, Watch, because you do not know the day or the hour wherein the Son of Man comes. And he also said that they came knocking, saying, Lord, open to us. And he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I know you not. To know in the original language here, it means a deep, intimate, experiential knowledge of, not simply a head knowledge or something that you learn from a discipleship training class or from a, a, a 10 steps guide to prayer. Uh, that's not going to give anyone intimacy. Like I've said before, if you're in love with someone, you don't need someone to give you a program or a 10 steps guide. They'll simply long for them and want to be with them. Uh, ask the Holy Spirit if you do not have this intimacy with him the way a bride would experience with her bridegroom. Be honest with the Lord. Tell him, Lord, I don't know what this is. I haven't tasted this with you. I want to be one of those wise virgins that's ready for you when you come with my vessel filled and ready to go and burning for you. That when you come, I'm ready and I can just go in with you to the marriage. Um, I myself have asked Jesus to please cause me to live with him now, right now, as if I was already with him. And he's answered that. I have said, Lord, please draw me, live with me, speak to me, interact with me. Right now, even in this age, as if I was already home with you, so that when you come, you and I are just picking up where we left off, that I'm already living in you so intimately every day and being myself in you and you and me, that when I physically see you face to face, that it's no different than how we're living with one another now. The only difference is that now I can see you face to face physically. But do you know you can have that kind of intimacy with Jesus? This is the kind of intimacy he's talking about with the wise virgins. So please, I, I can't stress it enough, uh, of course, this is my own twist on this scripture, but I think when these wise virgins told the unwise, we can't give you what we have. I truly believe there's, there's too much dependency on pastors and teachers and people's programs and books to give them Jesus. Uh, people think because they sit in a church every week or because they've read the latest um, devotional or the, the pastor preaches at them once a week or, or they go to a seminar or something that this is supposed to prepare them for their husband for their bridegroom coming this is not true if you do not spend quality time with Jesus in prayer talking with him seeking him and just living in him personally face to face every day you're not gonna be ready and and that you can't rely on me to give it to you you can't rely on another pastor teacher or book to give it to you no one's intimacy even in human relationships can be built on such things much less with god
So please live in such a way with Jesus because I that if he were to come within the next few years, because I believe we're at the door of the tribulation, I truly do, the great tribulation, please live with him now every day as if you were already with him so that when he appears, you are jumping up and down excited and in love with him, not feeling ashamed because you were so distracted by the cares of this world and didn't have enough oil of your own and you had to go ask someone else to give you your intimacy with Jesus. Pursue him for yourself.